Hey guys, this is Castle. And I'm Sarah 81. Mm -hmm. Together we decided to put together a little tips and tricks video in order to help you guys out and hopefully make you a paintball pro. The motivation behind this video came from kind of scouring Discord and Reddit and seeing just random snippets of info and advice here and there. And um, I've actually heard, had a lot of people in game ask me about ways that they can become better and things that they've seen that uh, we do consistently. And I decided, hey, why not just make a video about it and kind of put together what I've learned over the past year of consistent play with a lot of really competitive people. Now, right off the bat, Obviously, this is coming straight from my personal experience. Uh, it's not the only way to play the game. I'm going to say it throughout all, all the other clips and everything, that you can do it the way that you want to. And obviously, it's very tailored to the way that you play. However, these are the things that I found to be useful. So if you disagree with me, that is perfectly fine. If not, then hopefully maybe you can get some use out of it. So I hope you guys enjoy. The paintball pistol is your default weapon in every single map that you're going to come across in paintball. Uh, it follows a very similar mechanic to all the other weapons that you're going to encounter with a few caveats which I'll discuss in other videos. But the general concept should be the same. The, where you, the place you aim and the things that you compensate for will be very similar. Now, there are a lot of different ways to hold a paintball pistol and a lot of different ways to be very accurate with paintball pistols like shooting. It all really boils down to practice, but in my opinion there is a more optimal way to hold it that will help bolster and kind of boost your accuracy to a point to where you have a good um, start. So to begin with, we need to adopt an appropriate stance. You want to have a kind of wide stance with your feet at about shoulder width apart. Um, I like to fully extend my shooting arm here. So whenever I move, it's going to kind of remain anchored in one particular spot. I like to always be facing towards the person. Obviously, that's not always the case when you're actually playing, but when you can, try to face directly, and it gives you a good line of sight. And then in circumstances where you only have one gun versus having two, you can just support the other gun with your um, free hand, and this helps you stabilize it. So bring it all together. That's generally, in my opinion, the best um, stance in order to get really accurate shots. Next, let's discuss where to aim in order to compensate for distance and for motion. So, as you may have noticed in paintball, there is a pretty substantial bullet drop. And this becomes even more pronounced the further away that you get. So the further away you get from a target, the more that you're going to have to arc. This takes a little bit of time to get used to, and it takes a little practice, but it's something that you really need to master in order to be accurate. Uh, bullet drop applies towards every single weapon in the game, even the shotgun, but because the range is so short, you're really not going to see much of an effect. You also see it with a sniper, which I'll, I'll discuss later. Um, the next thing you need to compensate for is motion. Now, generally speaking, people are moving around a lot, but assuming that they're moving in a single linear fashion and they're not changing and jumping around a lot, what you can do to compensate for that is rather than shooting straight at the person, which I see a lot of people make the mistake of doing, they kind of follow along with that person, rather than shooting to where the person will be. So in order to put together how far away the person will be and the fact that they're going to be in a different location, you really should be trying to shoot at a diagonal to the person like this. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. At a short distance. At a moderate distance. At a far distance. Once you're face to face with a real person, one thing you need to be aware of is where their hitboxes are. So notice she's got a lot of extra decorations or outfit stuff around her. It's all based on the default um, player uh, profile as to what actually hits. So if you shoot a wing, it's not actually going to hit. You'd have to shoot her in the face or torso. You can also shoot him in the hand and you can shoot their weapon, which is really important when you're handling bigger weapons or you're going around a corner. So that's something to be aware of, both for an offensive point and a defensive stance. Now if a person is dodging, so for instance, if we get Sarah to dodge from side to side here, obviously you can't shoot over there to get him. But one thing, one mistake that I see people make a lot is they keep trying to follow the person, right? So she starts dodging and I start shooting, I cannot hit her. 
So one thing, if a person keeps going back and forth, you can just shoot in kind of one spot, and they'll come back straight directly to that spot. And that's a common mistake I see a lot of people make, is they'll try to follow them, but they'll keep missing. So if a person is strafing back to back, just shoot in one location, let them come to you. Now we're going to go over some grenade concepts. All right, so grenades are super handy, they're super hefty, they're my personal favorite, and in any given match, they're probably half of my kills, because frankly, I love grenades, and they're the bomb. <laughs> but there are a couple things you need to be aware of. Grenades, when you are holding them, you'll notice that there is no cook time. The, the pin is still in, relatively speaking, and it's ready to go. One thing that I see a lot of people don't do is they don't cook their grenades. What they'll do is they'll just kind of toss the grenade, right? So no matter where you throw it, yeah, it'll go there. But notice it's a little bit altered to where I kind of want it to go. So for instance, I want it to hit kind of that center area and I throw it. Notice, because I didn't cook it, it's going to go <laughs> way past. So that... If you don't cook your grenade, you would give the other person the chance to dodge the grenade. They exactly. would know it's coming. Exactly. So not only is it not as accurate, uh, they will be able to dodge it as well, even if it was accurate. For some reason, I was able to get it in there, like Sarah said. They could dodge it super easily. So one minute grenades. remaining. And the way you can do that is you can simply let go, hold it again, wait for a little bit, toss it, bam, it hits exactly where you want to go. The next thing that you need to be aware of is, apart from cooking grenades, you also want to be aware of the area of effect. Now notice that when a grenade explodes, it explodes in a spherical shape, a circle, right? That means that if you throw it up in the air and let it explode up there, she's not going to be in the area. It's going to only encompass one little area of effect, and it's going to have less of a chance of it hitting, and it gives her a greater chance to dock and avoid the explosion. So in general, not every case, but in general, what you want to do is when you throw a grenade, you want to throw it as low to the ground as possible. Here, so it has a wider area of explosion and a wider chance of getting to them. One other thing to be aware of when it comes to grenades is explosions go through walls. So if someone's hiding behind a wall, if you're that person, don't be surprised when a grenade kills you. Like that. So we've already discussed how to cook grenades and we've discussed the appropriate placement of grenades in order to get the maximum area of effect. The next thing I'd like to discuss is shooting grenades. Now, grenades will explode if you shoot them, whether they are sitting down on a surface or if they're in the air. If they're shooting where they stand, here are a couple things that we need to kind of go over. First of all, when you shoot grenades, they explode immediately and they pretty much take out anything in the surrounding vicinity. Additionally, if you shoot a grenade, it will trigger the next two grenades next to them. Now, depending on which grenade that you shoot, if you shoot the leftmost one, like I showed you here, it will cause the right two to go to the right, and if you shoot the rightmost one, it'll cause the left two to fly off to the left, and this can be used in various maps in order to get that kind of spill-off effect. Next thing to be aware of is if you are going to shoot grenades, please, please shoot grenades only if you suspect an enemy is nearby or if there is an enemy right there. Don't shoot grenades if there is no one around because the reason is you can use grenades more effectively by throwing them, and your teammates will be considering this as well, and really it's, it should be a no-brainer, but I, I see people constantly shooting grenades for no reason, and it can cost a team the win, in my, in my opinion. Also, if you're at the enemy's base, you can go ahead and just shoot those grenades so they don't have the grenades when they respawn. That's one thing to consider. One more thing, um, there is a little trick that you can use using the, um, the grenades while they're in the air. You can't shoot the grenades while they're directly in your hands, however, what a lot of people do is if they can actually shoot the grenades the moment you drop it, kind of like this. This is really useful because you can now carry the grenades around and then immediately set them off. There's no cook time, so there's no triggering other people. People won't know what's happening. So it's really helpful to kill someone through a wall or something or you need to kill them quickly. Teleporters use this a lot and it's... Um, it can be really deadly with the right circumstance. So I suggest playing around with it a little bit. It's very simple, just simply the moment it drops, use your gun and shoot it. It won't explode while it's in your hand, but it will if it's in there. Also, if someone's throwing your grenade at you, you could 
in theory shoot it. I really haven't been able to consistently do this, so I don't. I wouldn't recommend trying it, but that's one thing to be aware of. Paintball assault rifles follow many of the similar mechanics that paintball pistols do, however, with a couple caveats. First of all, you'll notice that with a paintball pistol, there's pretty much no real recoil. It's going to always go in the same direction. Paintball assault rifles, however, if you shoot in one single line, you'll notice that if you're holding it vertically, the recoil will cause the cluster of paintball pellets or balls to go up in a vertical. The same way, if you hold it horizontal, it'll spread horizontally, and I'm, I'm not moving my assault rifle at all. As opposed to paintball pistols, it'll always go in the same location. So you can use that to your advantage in different ways. Sometimes I like to hold it horizontal and kind of give it, without even moving, just a nice little spread. If you want to keep it in a nice cluster, if you're really trying to be accurate, you need to compensate for that spread. So if you're shooting, I can got to pull the assault rifle down, and that'll compensate for it. The sniper. The sniper is a lot of newer players' bane. They don't like the sniper rifle. It's not super user-friendly like the shotgun is. There's not a lot of spread like the assault rifle is, and it doesn't fire as quick, like as um, fast as like a paintball does. However, contrary to what people might think, the sniper in the right hand can be extremely powerful. And you'll see with a lot of top-tier players, those in the league, or those just like really getting those high kill ratios on some of the longer maps like Clear Cut or Quarry, you need to use the sniper rifle in some circumstances. And if you get really good, then obviously it can be your best friend. The thing about the sniper rifle that's so good is one, the bullet drop is much less. There is still a little bit of bullet drop. So if I aim and I look down the sight, you'll notice that when you shoot, there is a little bit of bullet drop. It's not much, but if you're on like a really far map, you have to consider that. Another thing is, um, it's super fast. It's really hard to actually dodge. So if someone's moving around, you can just aim a little bit in front of them, and you can still hit them. Okay. Now, the biggest thing about sniper rifles is just getting the accuracy down. I see a lot of people, when they use the sniper rifle, they're aiming down the sights. And that's great and all, that actually is the best way, in theoretically, to be accurate. However, in reality, they're not going to be standing still most of the time. And if they are, then that means they're probably trying to snipe you. So any proficient sniper does not stay still when they aim. They're going to be moving around a lot, which obviously is going to be really hard to use with your scope. So the first thing you need to do is you need to learn how to use the sniper rifle without the scope. What I like to do is I like to kind of line it up along this axis right here. So when I aim, it kind of gives me that kind of earth. Another thing is, you have to be really um, stable when you shoot the sniper, so I like to kind of grasp my other controller, use both to aim. You can hold it arms at arm's length, you can hold it up close, whatever way that you need to get it accurate. So I was actually debating whether or not to even discuss the shotgun, because frankly it's the most user-friendly weapon. It's uh, one shot, one kill with a nice widespread, it's pretty much instantaneous. They did make some modifications since the last Sunset Drive-In update. Its uh, projectile speed is actually a little slower now. The spread, I think, is the same, and the range has been pretty dramatically decreased, I think, from 18 meters to about 15 meters. Um, that being said, its capacity, it's its still really useful uh, at, in a short in a short distance. It's great for taking out teleporters and actually other walkers in general. I guess the only recommendation I would have for how to use it is I wouldn't use it alone or like with just two shotguns. I think two shotguns is almost overkill. Um, in general, I would usually pair it with like another weapon, like a, a pistol, AR, sniper, whatever else. It works pretty well in that fashion. So you can get the medium range and even some of the long range with some short range. And yeah, it's great for pretty much any use. So recommend using this a lot. Grenade launcher is another short-range weapon, just like the shotgun. It kind of ejects this grenade that will explode on impact. And I make a point of saying that it will explode on impact as to one of the common mistakes I see people make with the, paint, the grenade launcher. They will shoot the grenade launcher directly at the person, in, as opposed to just shooting in the ground around the person. And I don't know why it, they do this. It's Maybe it's instinctual, but 
the odds of it hitting the person is much less than just trying to shoot around the person, letting the area of effect take work. So if you're going to use it, try not to shoot directly at the person. I mean, it works sometimes. I've been hit in the face with the grenade launched by this, but you're going to have a much higher chance by shooting around the person. The grenade works just like the other grenade in that it'll go through walls, so it's great for dealing for tight corners, especially like in this map, spillway. Um, one more thing to note is when if you're dealing with someone shooting a grenade launcher at you, one thing that you need to try is rather than trying to duck or dodge out of the way, try to jump out of the way, actually, just because it's limited to the ground. If you jump out of the way, that's actually the best way, in my opinion, to try to get away from it. It's kind of unique in that most other guns I would recommend kind of ducking to the side like this, but with a paint grenade, you got, got to try to jump out of the way. But yeah, it's very fun to use, and I would recommend using it in combination with other weapons. A shotgun and paint grenade combo together is extremely powerful, hence special on maps such as this. So test it out, play around with it, and just enjoy. It's, it's a really cool weapon. The paint thrower. The paint thrower is the one of Paintball's latest additions. It's kind of locked to the last map they released, and it's, it's essentially a minigun, and that's what it is. Um, a couple points, two notes. Uh, it's the actual spread velocity. It's the It releases in a continuous fashion, which makes it unique to any other weapon. However, one thing to note is the actual projectiles that actually do damage do not include the small ones. It's just the larger projectiles. So if you are surprised why you didn't really get killed by it, it's because you have to be hit, be hit by the larger projectiles. Uh, another thing to note, it can be pretty easy to dodge because it's so slow. Just make sure to keep an eye out for it. Um, if you are going to use it, just please note that it has a massive hitbox. It essentially doubles your hitbox. So if you're, unless you're going to just kind of be standing here, I would definitely recommend kind of tucking it into your body like this to kind of hide it away or minimize and then just pull it out whenever you need to use it. The other thing I'd like to discuss real quick is the paint mine. The paint mine is also really awesome. It's great for like setting up traps and everything. It works pretty simply. You just kind of lock it in somewhere. You can even put it on your weapon. I've seen a lot of people do that. And the moment someone comes in its vicinity, you get like a, I think it's like a, a second or half a second before it actually detonates. One mistake I do see a lot of people make is when they come across a paint mine, rather than trying to get behind cover or kind of get out of its blast radius, they'll just kind of run away from it. They'll just freak out. Uh, the way that the paint mine explosion works is different than the other explosions. It won't go through any uh, walls or surfaces. It, it kind of spreads out like a shotgun. So if you come across a paint mine and you haven't disarmed it, the first thing I think you should always, always do is try to hide behind something because it won't go through there and you won't give up your position as easily. Uh, another thing to note is you can disarm it, which just by shooting it. So that's definitely something to be taking into account, especially in the flag areas. Before going into any area where you suspect there might be a paint mine, I would take a grenade and I would just kind of chuck it into these areas. It'll clear out all the paint mines and everything. So they're fun, but they're also really easy to deal with if you know what you're doing. Defense mechanisms. They say that a good offense is the best defense. And while I hold that to be true, it's only partially true in paintball. Because everything is a one-hit kill, killing them, yes, is good, and it's going to probably save you. But also, making sure not to get hit is equally as important. What I see a lot of newer people do is that they will stand still when they shoot. They can have great aim and everything, but if they stand still and they get shot, that really doesn't serve you. You get a one-to-one -one kill, and it's not really what's going to make you excellent. So the next thing that you really need to work on is dodging. There are two ways, really, that you can dodge. It should be kind of obvious. It depends on how limited your play space is. I like to keep my feet kind of planted. I don't like to really move around too much when I go. But two ways is side to side, or you can do down. Now you can combine the two to kind of dodge kind of to the side here. That one's a little bit harder. Um, it's a little bit harder to do consistently. But in my personal opinion, when someone is firing at you, the best way to dodge is kind of to down real quick. Another thing to be aware of is you want to vary your dodges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Sarah kind of start shooting at me a little bit, and I'm kind of going to demonstrate like um, how to mix up your dodges. 
so kind of go down and go back side to side, move closer here, and like that. And notice, Sarah is really accurate, but just simply moving from side to side may not be enough. If you start to get predictable, you're going to die. In this scenario, we're going to assume that I know where she is and I know which direction she's throwing the grenade. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run straight at her, like this. Now, if she's not firing, obviously, um, it works a little better. But what happens is, the way that she's throwing at you, sometimes it's in your best interest to move straight forward. Because the, the grenade is going in that direction, going in the opposite of the direction is always the best idea. So in a lot of instances, rather than just moving side to side, or trying to run backwards from a grenade, move straight forward, and that'll give you the best chance. And you can also kind of fire at them as you're going. It might also kind of freak them out as well. So let's say we don't know where Sarah's throwing at, and you suddenly hear a grenade getting cooked, and she's trying to throw it. It's in your best interest to go the opposite direction, because what she's going to do is she's going to throw where I'm going to be. So obviously it make, should make sense that if you hear a grenade, you don't know where it's coming from, go in the opposite direction, that'll give you the best chance to survive a grenade. So another way of dealing with grenades is you can actually grab the grenades that are thrown at you, and you can actually throw it back. Grenades don't hurt you which is really nifty. So if you can grab it, not only can you avoid death, you can potentially use it as an offensive mechanism as well. You kind of turn the tides on them. And... Yeah. <laughs> the next step in defense, if you're lucky enough to end up in a map where you can actually find a shield, you can not only dodge, but you can also have a shield to protect you. Now one thing, and one common mistake that I see a lot of newer players do is they don't know how to hold a shield correctly. Right? A lot of people will do, what will they'll do is they will hold a shield kind of in a sideways position like this right here. And it looks great and all, but notice in this position, one of her head's sticking out there, she's got like the bottom part of her body down there, and it's all fair game to shoot. And they're holding it too close too. If your body's clipping out through the shield, you can easily get hit. So the optimum place in the way that you should be holding the shield is at an angle like she is right now and holding it right below the eyes right and kind of hugging it to your body in theory if a person's just you and another person you can hold the shield out in like at arm's length and in theory that sounds really good because that because of the way the bullet drops and spreads and everything that i'll cover but one it's a little bit harder to see and two it's much easier to kind of come along the side and shoot them so in general unless you can read where all the bullets are recommend holding it close to your body at all times and hugging it right below. And that's kind of decreases the chance of you getting hit and minimizes the area of exposure you have. One last concept, and a very, very important one to keep in mind, is when you have a shield, please note that your gun, like we talked about in the last video, is vulnerable. So even if your whole body is covered, like Sarah's is, notice if you shoot her gun, she will die. So make sure when you're holding a shield, like so, that you keep your gun either kind of facing towards you or you hide it like this. Right? One last trick I want to show you in regards to movement. I've already discussed dodging, but this trick is used while you're in motion. And it can make you a little bit faster, and in particular, it's great for capture the flag. The only downside is your accuracy is pretty much going to go down the drain, so it's use it circumstantially. The idea behind this concept is you're actually moving your play space by altering where your head is. When you snap around, you'll notice that it spins around your head rather than the center of your play space. So if you shift your head, and I'm going to show you the stationary, if you shift your head and you snap 180, your center of your play space will actually move. If you shift again, snap 180, it'll move again. So in this way, if we keep repeating back and forth, shifting the head, rotating around, back and forth, you can actually move your entire play space without going anywhere. Well, without using your joystick. So putting this into practice, what you can do is you can, as you're moving along, you can shift your play space and rotate while you're moving. So this, in addition to moving, you're just utilizing not only the motion, the sprinting motion of your character, but also shifting around your play space. So this can make you a little faster. And because your body is moving in a really crazy fashion, and actually I can show you right here. If I go show you follow, it can make you look wobbly and harder to hit overall. So it definitely takes a little bit more 
a little bit more involvement, but in general, if you can get this down, I would highly recommend trying it because you see this used competitively a lot. All right, so the last thing that we need to discuss before we draw this video to a conclusion is how to deal with teleporters. Uh, teleportation was the original movement mode in Recrum. It was what I learned on, and that's something that I've kind of transitioned away from since they introduced walking. However, that being said, there are still a lot of teleporters, and it's still used very competitively in a lot of game modes. That being said, it's probably a good idea to get used to dealing with teleporters rather than, I don't know, complaining about it or calling them hackers like I hear a lot of people doing. Um, dealing with teleporters, if you just follow some basic concepts and rules, it's actually really easy to deal with them. And it can be actually, in my opinion, a little bit more easy to deal with a moderate teleporter versus like a really good walker. All right, so the first thing that we need to discuss is just basic concepts behind uh, or basic mechanics of the teleporter, uh, that teleporters have to abide by. First of all, when teleporters move around, it's instantaneous. However, you do notice that they have kind of a delay. The delay is two seconds, so it's within that two second window that you have in order to shoot them. So let's say that Sarah is at a pretty good distance away from me and she's teleporting. If I'm at a distance this far away, if I shoot at her, she can actually just easily teleport away and dodge my bullets. That being said, teleporters tend to thrive at a further distance. That's where they like to play, and they're going to try to keep the distance away from you in most instances. Now, in my opinion, the, the best distance is short and up close. Um, not to get too close, because they can actually teleport behind you, but uh, in about like a two teleport distance. So like right about here. Notice if it's here and I shoot at her, when she teleports, she has no time to avoid that teleport, or that bullet. When teleporters teleport, they have a guiding point. It should be clear as day. Uh, most teleporters will not be super tricky with this. They are going to show you pretty much exactly where they're going to be. So this is really the only way that you can kind of estimate where they're going to be besides where their hand is positioned. But you should be using this consistently. Now, a really good teleporter, they will limit the amount of time and exposure that their guiding point is showing. So it, it can get a little tricky, but for the most part, look at that guiding point. That can score you a lot of easy kills. The next concept is the idea of corralling a teleporter. Because teleporters can move pretty sporadically and from point to point, it is in good practice to try to limit their mobility. So the way that you can do this is if you have a, an assault rifle or a shotgun or something, but say uh, Sarah's right there, if I shoot to kind of her left, she's going to instinctually move to or if I shoot left, she's going to instinctually move in that area. So by doing this, I can kind of guide her to where I want to be. And this is something you should be doing pretty consistently, kind of manipulating their movements. And you can do this with walkers as well. Another thing to be aware of is the what I like to call teleporting kamikaze fighters, or the suicide bombers. What a lot of really good teleporters will do is they will hide behind a location or someplace that you don't know. So if you don't have keep a beat on them, they can carry a grenade with them, and they'll shoot it immediately, kind of, like it, kind of like that. And it's something to really be careful about. Um, the way that I like to deal with them is, first of all, I like to keep that two teleport distance away from them, a place where kind of that sweet spot where I can kill them before they can teleport away, and to avoid them killing me with that method. Um, the weapons that I recommend using against teleporters is, if you're in a short distance, shotgun. Shotgun is your best chance, because even if they teleport away, sometimes the shotgun blast will get them. The next best weapon would be kind of a toss-up between the sniper versus the assault rifle. If you're really good at the sniper, that's pretty much an instant kill at any distance. So that's really a teleporter's worst weapon against them, and one they like to use. Um, assault rifles are good, nice spread, and the limited maps that have assault rifles, grab those. Um, grenade launchers aren't too great against teleporters, but there's some use. Um, you can actually use grenades in a limited capacity against teleporters. But really, I like to use grenades to kind of corral them, like I was mentioning earlier. And the idea behind corralling them is if you cook the grenade, throw it towards one section, and have them teleport in a different way, they can teleport in the direction that you suspect, or you can um, kind of guess. So, uh, those are just a few of the things I use consistently against teleporters, and against just normal teleporters, I don't really find it too difficult to deal with them. 
Uh, and once again, to reiterate, teleporters are pretty prevalent. It's a good idea to just get used to them and not to complain about them. So, so yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>So let me just quickly walk you through some of the settings that I like to use in order to optimize my gameplay. These are, of course, for personal preference. You don't have to use these, but in my opinion, these are the settings that will get you the most out of what you have in Rec Room. Uh, in general, I always keep Auto Sprint on, and this I always keep on. It helps you not only move around as fast as possible, but it also helps maintain a consistent movement pace, so you're not transitioning from walk to sprinting consistent, uh, all the time. Second, I always have Swipe Rotate on, and this pairs really nicely with Snap90. This helps um, turn around really quickly uh, if someone's behind you, and it's also a requirement for that movement, little movement trick that I showed you earlier to get make you go faster. So if you are considering that, you will need to have this setting on. Uh, the next thing is um, I like to turn off anything that narrows my field of vision. It can make some people nauseous, so if you can't tolerate that, then obviously keep it on. But uh, if you can, I would highly recommend turning anything that does that because in wearing a VR headset in general already narrows your vision. And with paintball, you want to get as much view as possible. Uh, with graphics quality, I always have mine set to simple. I have a TI 1080 good graphics card and processor, but Rec Room has had a lot of latency issues and a lot of issues trying to maintain uh, frames per second, so keeping the graphics quality as simple as possible is ideally the best. Um, I know that you can change it with Oculus and Vive. I'm not quite sure about PSVR if they have that op option, but if you can, turn it down. Uh, right now my streaming camera is on, but that definitely can lag, so make sure that's turned off. And always, always have show names on. Um, when you have maps with a lot of hiding places, sometimes the only thing that lets you know where the enemy is, is having the names on. This has saved me multiple times. And not only that, it can help you guide where you want to shoot as well. One more thing, and I can't really show you here, but if you, on your actual computer monitor and display for Oculus and Vive, what you can do is you can actually kind of minimize and decrease the resolution of your display screen. And in order to do this, you can push Alt-Enter to enter into a windowed mode and then literally just drag the screen as small as possible. I found this to greatly increase my frames per second and increase my overall performance in games. Hello again. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the random snippets of information that I gave you and kind of a brief overview of everything. Um, there was a lot to cover, so I appreciate you guys sticking around and listening to me ramble on <laughs> for almost, what, half an hour. <laughs> um, once again, I said this at the beginning of the video, and I'll say it one more time. These are only my personal opinions and things that I've experienced. You're more than welcome to disagree. If you want to leave comments, feel free to down below. And you could also shoot me a message that we could discuss it further. If you have any other questions as well, I'll be answering them down there. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And I hope you guys have a good one. Bye now. Bye.